In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the scene organization for these objects that we've modeled. It's pretty important to organize your scene, especially when you're going to want to be duplicating objects and having instances of things around. So we're going to take a look at two basic mechanisms that we can do that with. You can see right here, we've just got our scene and we've got just everything kind of loose hanging in the scene right there. And I'd like to duplicate this object, so we first need to organize it. I'm going to come up here to the main collection and I'm going to turn that off to reduce a lot of the visual clutter. The first thing that we're going to look at is we're going to organize things by parenting them to an empty. I need to press Shift and S because I want to move the cursor to the world origin. It so happens to be I've modeled this object also around the world origin, so the two will match. We want to actually add an empty now, so I'm going to press Shift and A and we're just going to add a plane axis empty, which you can see right there. We're going to reduce its size because it's kind of enormous right now. So I'll just make it two inches. I'm going to call this pill bottle. OK, so what we need to do first is let's look and see if there are any items that need to be organized in terms of sort of a hierarchy. So we could come in here and we've got the ridges and we've got the empty that the ridge mechanism is using to populate the ridges around. And I think what I'd like to do is put those with inside their own empty. So I'm going to come in here and duplicate the empty that's being used as the duplication axis because it's in the position that I want. So I'm going to copy that and then paste it. And we're just going to call this cap. Okay, so we actually have the cap geometry itself. So I'm going to parent this by holding the shift key and dragging it on top of that empty. And then we're going to take these two items and I'm going to take these and just do the same thing where I'm going to hold the shift key and then I'm going to drop those inside of there. So we have this single empty that can kind of act as the single cap object if you want to think about it that way. In fact, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to increase the size of that to two inches also to make it easier. So I can just come over here and select that and then we could move that whole cap assembly. So let's say that I want to select that whole cap assembly right there. What I'm going to do is, in fact, let me rotate the view here so that we can kind of see this a little bit better. It was in the camera view and that's going to be hard to see what's happening. I'm going to select the cap body geometry. But what I want to do is move all of that assembly. So I'm going to press Shift and G, which invokes the Select Group function, and I'm going to select Parent, and watch what happens. It selects that parent, empty, and then now I can move that kind of as a unit. Okay, so that's something to be aware of. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to take, we've got the pill bottle empty that we had created, and I'm going to take cap, and I'm going to hold the shift key and drag that into pill bottle. And then the neck, shift key, I'm going to drag that into pill bottle. Label goes into pill bottle. And I'm just continuing to hold the shift key down. And then body will drag that into pill bottle. So everything is parented to this single empty right here. So now we could come in and just move that around. Now, if you want to duplicate this, sort of like an, an instance type of mechanism, what you first need to do is bring up the context menu over here and do a select hierarchy. When I first started using Blender, I was a little bit mystified this because it kind of worked a little bit differently than Modo did. And I, and I was always accidentally just instancing the pill bottle empty, thinking it would automatically select the hierarchy, and it doesn't do that. So you need to make sure and remember to do a select hierarchy first and then you come up to object over here and you do a duplicate linked. And it's going to do this duplication where it tries to move in screen space. That's actually not very useful in my opinion. So I'm going to press the escape key. And then I'm going to come down to the widget and just grab the control that moves it parallel to the ground. So this is one way of producing an instance of an object or a series of objects that are parented together. But one thing to remember is that a big limitation of this at least is that if I add an object into this one here, the added object won't get propagated over to this object. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to start fresh to work with the collections mechanism. So what I want to do is I want to come up and select the main scene collection right here and we're going to click new collection. Okay, and then I'm going to click it again to generate a second one. But on the first one that we just generated, I'm going to double click that and we'll call this pill bottle. And then this next one we're going to call cap. And then we're going to click one more and it's going to put it inside of there because I had it selected. So I'll just drag that up to the main scene here. And we're going to call this one body. So you can clearly guess that we're going to move things into sort of a hierarchy here. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take cap and body and I want to move them inside of pill bottle. Then we have clearly things that we need to move into one or the other. So I'm going to take cap, cap goes into cap and body comes down here into the body, label goes into body and you're going to know you don't need to hold any modifiers down. These just drag and drop. Neck is part of body, so that will come right here. And then ridge and its rotation axis that the modifier is using, those all come up into cap. Okay, so there we go. We have a hierarchy here of those components. Now the cool thing about this is that we come over to pill bottle, and if we want to produce a duplicate or an instance of this into the scene, then we just right click on that and we just do an instance to scene. Now by default, what it's going to do is it's going to drop that instance, the origin of it, wherever the cursor is. So in this case, I'm going to press shift and S and I'm going to return that cursor to the world origin. And then I can press shift S again and I can do selection to cursor. So to, to put this another way, let me do this. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to delete that. And let's say that you want to put an instance of that collection right there. Then all you got to do is come over here to pill bottle and do a instance to scene and it'll drop right there. Okay, so that's basically how that works. It's pretty cool. So we can come over here and arrange this. And the nice thing about this is that it just, you just click it, it selects the whole thing. You don't need to do that parent selecting thing if you're using a nested hierarchy. The real benefit of this is that we can come in and add objects to this. So if I came over here, for instance, I'm gonna press Shift S to return my cursor to the world origin. If I add an object, so let's come over here and we'll add a UV sphere. Let's change that size here. 0.25 and then I move that up you can see that is automatically added to the instance so that's a really handy feature of this of using this approach right here so let's do a delete but let's say that we want to produce an instance of this where we have the cap sitting down on the side So what we're going to do now is I'm going to come in here and we're going to generate a version of this bottle where we have the cap off to the side, but we still want to use these instances of the collections. So I'm going to come down to body, right click, and I'm going to do instance to scene. And I will drag that into the main scene collection. Same for the cap. I'm going to do an instance to scene, drag that into the main scene. Now what I want to do is create an empty that is going to house those two instances. So we'll come over and do an empty of a plane axis. It's going to be enormous again. <laughs> I'm going to set that to two inches. And it's by default going to drop into whatever scene, into whatever collection you had. So I'll drop that back into scene here. And I'm going to call this pill bottle cap. I'm going to take body and I'm going to drag that into cap off. I have to hold the shift key down to drag that and parent it. And for the cap, we have a really interesting situation right here. Let's come into the front view and look at this. Let me turn off all those scene things. Is that its pivot is way down here. And it would actually be easier if we had a pivot up at the top right here to control it from, you know, when we lay it against the object over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back down and add another empty into the scene. And we're going to call this one 
see it remembered too that's good i'm going to move this back up into the scene collection i keep forgetting to select that right there but i'm going to call this cap rotation axis but in this case i'm going to move it so that it sits basically right at the bottom of the cap it doesn't need to be 100 percent precise okay so with that in that position right there i can take this cap of the cap collection and i'm going to parent that to this new empty and what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to rotate easily around that location. Now we take this and we move it into the pill bottle. I'm going to hold the shift key down with the cap off. So what we've done is we've used a combination of this parenting with instances back to collections. So now what I can do is I can come over to this hybrid mixture of instances to collections and parenting to empties. And I can move this off to the side right over there. And then you can see we can sort of pose that and move it. But here's where the fun part comes in. Now I can take this cap, which we've parented to that empty, and I can come down here and pose that. So if we want to rotate this, I could rotate that and then we come back over and then we can just lay it up against our bottle and the ground. So it kind of looks like it's just resting right there. So the cool thing about this is that now when we come back over to our camera, I just come back up to this master empty and I can pose that. Now we maintain all of the flexibility. Let's look at this in a render right here where we can see that we're still referencing back to one piece of geometry. and We have the great flexibility. If I come back over here to this object inside of the cap collection and I add a new object, let's add that same object. Let's come over here and add that UV sphere. Let's make that 0.25. And when we move that up, ta-da, it appears in all of those instances to that cap collection. So this is really a flexible way of organizing things. One thing to finally note here in terms of working with this, once you get a more complex scene going on, is it may be that you want this original one right here to be transformed somehow, but you'd really like to maintain the original and exactly its position and orientation and all of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to pill bottle. In fact, let's turn off the renderer the main pill bottle, and we're going to do an instance to scene, but you don't want the original collection set to be rendered. So that's when you come up to this little checkbox right here and you turn that off. And what this allows me to do is then come in if I wanted to do a little bit of posing work with this, I don't have to apply that transform to an original object. The original remains in an untransformed state, which is easiest to work on it in case you need to.